Greetings, ladies and gentlemen. This is Kazu here, and I want to thank you guys for joining me in our first episode of the Fallout New Vegas playthrough. This is going to be a hardcore, ultra modded playthrough. We're using the Fallout New Vegas Remastered 2022 uh, collection from the Nexus mods, and we've also added on some mods on top of that. So we're going to dive straight into it. Um, I'll probably be talking about the mods in this list later on, but right now we're in character creation. We're going to be picking our specials. Um, I want our character to be a gunslinger. So I want our strength to be around average for our character. We want to be able to wield most of the firearms in the game properly. We're going to dump perception because I have mods like real recoil that don't really care too much about the accuracy. And then we're going to dump endurance because we don't need um, a super lot of survivability. We're going to be playing ranged. Then we're going to put one point up in charisma. We're going to be putting priority in our intelligence, our agility, and our luck specials. Um, mainly because this is going to really help out both level progression as well as our firearms capabilities. So that's going to be our stat spread. Pretty balanced. Nothing. We're not dumping anything. Um, so we're going to be a well-rounded character for now. And we're going to name this character um, Arya. This is typically the name I use for female characters. I don't know why. I just prefer that. And we do have the mannequin races. So I'm going to be using a preset from the mannequin races so that we can have... You know, a semi-decent looking female character for this playthrough. It's actually pretty hard to find a good looking setup for Fallout games, not gonna lie. Um, but I do like this preset a lot, so we're gonna be using that. Our tag skills are gonna be guns, and also medicine and sneak. So, if, you might be asking why we're, we're putting a lot of points in medicine. Well, we're gonna need our stim packs to be very efficient. Um, because when we take sh when we take damage, we're gonna be taking a lot of damage. And our stim packs heal over time rather than in a burst. Which means we want to actually prioritize the medicine skill early on. So we can get good value and good healing out of our stim packs. We're actually not gonna have a plentiful supply of stim packs if we're getting into gunfights often. Which is... You know, the opposite of what's normally the case when you play Fallout New Vegas. Usually you have like 50 million stim packs by the time you're level 30. Uh, for our traits, we actually have a mod that lets us choose as many traits as we want. And there's also new traits added in. So we have traits like the Fake Physician. You receive a set of supplies, but then you also lose karma at the start. You know, so we, have, we have some traits that are like really small that are easy pickups. Um, but the main things we want are, are going to be Kamikaze, which is going to reduce your damage threshold but it's going to increase your action points so that's a pretty good trade-off um, for an aggressive character we're going to take ranger for one extra agility but we're going to take extra crit damage from raiders and then we're going to take wild wasteland because that's just a fun that's just a fun trait to have and that's going to be mostly it oh we're also going to take tribal that's going to give us um i believe plus five to unarmed melee weapon damages but then we lose five energy weapons and guns which is a good trade-off because we, again, just want that bonus damage for melee if we're going to use it a little bit in the beginning of the game. And with this mod, so we do have an alternate start mod if you haven't already noticed. Um, we also can choose a background, so that's kind of new. And the backgrounds are going to give you starting stats. They sometimes have starting detriments as well, depending on the background. But um, what we're going to be looking for is the Sheriff. So the Sheriff is actually going to give us some pretty juicy starting stats. We get plus 15 equip speed, which is unique and then we have plus 10 percent attack speed and minus five percent ap cost so some really 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 good starting features you might think that's a little bit broken but trust me we're gonna need it because the enemies that we're gonna face um with this with all this mods enabled are gonna be quite difficult in the uh mid game early game it probably won't be too bad because we're gonna be fighting mostly unarmored humans and weak animals but once we, we start taking on the bigger animals the bigger creatures and monsters as well as you know heavily armored ncr legion whatever enemies we're facing it's gonna get pretty rough unless we have our shit together so i have jay sawyer's ultimate edition that's going to be kind of the main overhaul in terms of balancing for this mod setup and that's what's actually going to make it so that we need to scale properly if we want to be able to handle the mid game and late game content we're also going to have our level progression slowed down significantly i think exp is reduced by 33 percent and then our level cap is 35 instead of 50 so we're gonna have less perks too which means that we need to take um, our character building pretty seriously and yes, we are going to be enabling hardcore modes. So we're going to have all the downsides and drawbacks of that, but it's going to make the game a lot more immersive and just more enjoyable, at least for me and my perspective. I, I really do care about immersion. That's why when I play Skyrim, I cannot play it without Requiem. 
But now we're going to do some mod setup. So I'm going to go into my MCM and we're going to configure some mods for this. I, this intro part is going to be a little bit boring, I do admit, unfortunately. Um, but if you are interested in the mods, um, we can talk about that. And then I'll leave a timestamp on where to skip to if you want to just get straight to the gameplay starting of the playthrough. Um, right now for the mod setup, we have solid project. That's going to be a big one. It's going to be adding things like animated ingestibles, the roll mechanic, um, lowered weapons, obstacle climbing, things like that are the main features that I wanted to get out of solid project. I know, I think I could probably get most of the features out of Ezekiel project. I think that's the official, um, official mod for this. Solid project is not available on the Nexus. So if you do want these features, I think they are available in the Ezekiel project, but I'm just more familiar with solid projects. So I downloaded that. Um, and then a lot of the features overlap with just assorted mods um, jam so we're gonna disable pretty much everything like the hit mark indicators item previewers all of this stuff in this solid project number two column we're just gonna disable those um, and then we're gonna go to I think the the next main mod that I wanted to discuss which is immersive HUD this is a go-to mod if you want to make your gameplay more immersive by just having the HUD disable itself whenever it's not being used. So if you're not in combat, if you're not actively taking damage or low on health, um, it's just not going to show you your AP or health indicators as well as the compass and ammo and conditions. And for me, that's a really big mod because then it lets you really dive into the game and enjoy it without the HUD obstructing your vision unless it's necessary. So if you're in a gunfight, then yes, I do want to see those things, and it will show them for you. Another great mod is Arm to the Teeth. This is going to allow us to show our weapons on our back and on our holsters, our, our right and left hip holsters. So we can have up to four weapons, two rifles or two rifle type weapons on our back. And then we can have two handguns on our left and right hip. Those are going to be visible at all times, depending on where you hotkey the weapons. And that's just, again, a super immersive thing. I really love that. It even works with backpacks, which is going to be really cool. And I'll probably show that later on in the video when we find a backpack. We also have uh, the B42 suite of mods. We have the description. We have the melee bash. We have the inspect. Um, we have the inertia. All of these mods are just absolutely fantastic. They add so much good quality of life to the game um, that, again, just makes it so much more fun and fresh to play. A lot of these features are things you see in modern games. So like the melee bash, you have a melee attack with your gun so that you don't have to switch to the melee weapon. If the enemy's really low, you can finish them off with a punch if you run out of ammo. That's honestly a nice thing to have. Um, and then we have the inspection mod so we can actually do the weapon inspect kind of like in Call of Duty. Um, we do have, again, the arrangement of just mods. We're going to be disabling most of the features from this mod, though. We want to keep the loot menu. We want to keep the weapon wheel. We want to keep sprint, hold breath, bullet time, all those things that affect gameplay we want to keep. I don't really care too much about the hit markers or indicators, um, so we're going to remove that. And, yeah, that's pretty much going to be it for the mods, as far as I can recall. We also have a mod called Undeath. Um, so this mod is going to be overhauling our death system. It's going to give us a death alternative. It's very buggy though, so I don't know how much I'm really going to be using it. Hopefully I don't die much. I'm really trying to take this playthrough seriously. So, you know, the main goal is to just not die much, if at all. Um, but if we do die, we have a mechanic where we will lose EXP, we'll get knocked out, and then we'll come back up with invulnerability so that we can either retreat or we can reposition against our enemies and the enemies will have their health reset. So it's not like I can just die when the death claw has one health, come back up and then finish it off when I have invincibility. No, I'm still gonna have to deal with the consequences of my enemies getting their health reset back to full. Um, so that's gonna be quite challenging and let's dive straight into the playthrough now. All right, so now we're ready to start our playthrough. I did change out our starting gear so that we have a 357 Magnum as well as a Caravan Shotgun. Um, I took out the other starting weapons because we started with some OP stuff from our mod. It gave us a hunting shotgun and a uh, suppressed 22 SMG with like a billion ammo. So don't want that. We're just going to start off with some very basic guns. They are going to be in good condition, which is going to significantly boost our damage starting out early game. Um, but I'm okay with that. I, I don't know how to add in weapons that are already damaged, unfortunately. So we're just going to have to deal with them being in full condition, which is honestly a really good thing. So I'm Giant not really stay. complaining. 
and we're just gonna start off with the Good Springs quest line. Yeah. I guess there's so a if you've issue. already played Fallout New Vegas Sounds or like you if you've seen a Fallout New Vegas playthrough, you you probably know what's going to happen. I'm going to mostly skip through a lot of the dialogue, um, but yeah, we're going to be playing the main storyline. It's been a while since I played New Vegas, probably, I don't know, a couple years or so since I've actually done a playthrough of New Vegas, so I don't actually mind um, going through the main starting line. And then of course we're going to try getting around to the DLC early on, if possible. Um, probably as early as we can, maybe around yeah, like levels 15 or 20. And uh, yeah, and I, I honestly don't know what's in store, but hopefully this will be a good adventure of gunslinging. You know, some good old New Vegas, well, some good old Mojave Desert Wasteland content. Um, I gotta go chase so yeah, I hope you guys are going to enjoy this. As you can see, we do have... Um, our FOV changed to about 80 in first person. So it gives us a little bit of a zoomed out look, but we have much better peripherals. We also have true iron sights, which means that when we ADS, um, there's no zoom in. So it's gonna be harder to aim at range, but up close, especially when you're dealing with targets um, that are gonna be close range, you're gonna be able to hit them a lot more easily with your guns, especially because I have a real recoil mod or immersive recoil mod, that's going to make it a lot harder to stay on target, especially with fully automatic weapons. With semi-automatic and bolt action weapons, you're not going to notice it as much. But um, when I use fully automatic weapons, it's like you actually have to manage the recoil. Otherwise, you're going to just shoot everywhere and miss completely. Come with me. But yeah, we're going to help out Sunny kill these geckos. Actually, I already killed the first two geckos. And um, we're going to be moving on to the next spot where we're going to be killing the rest of the geckos. So we have our little hunting rifle. This is a 22 cal. It's been rechambered uh, in J Sawyer's Ultimate Edition 22 caliber in 6 Which I think does make more sense since it is a varmint rifle, but 22 would not pack a lot of a punch against these big geckos. And uh, now we're going to head on down to the lower area to rescue the prospector. Um, but to my surprise, she actually ended up killing the geckos herself, so we didn't need to help her. Um, but if we do talk to her, she does still give us the purified water, which is a nice thing to have. We definitely are going to have to manage our needs, our survival needs, which is, you know, hunger, thirst, and sleep. Those are now, all pretty important work. things that you're going to have to Here's manage. So having purified water at all times wanted, is essential, pretty much, because you're going to always get thirsty. That's the need that you'll notice is going to increase the most, especially on our character, because we have a sprinting mechanic that does increase our H2O drain um, whenever we use it. But I tried to make it as minimal as possible because I had it to the default setting of like 1 to 4 um thirst cost every time you use it and it was just making it so that my character was always thirsty 24 7 which is brutal now if you are sprinting 24 7 then it kind of does make sense that your character is always thirsty but i reduced it to the minimum value so we're not going to be getting affected as much for sprinting because the main thing is that the sprinting costs ap so we can't we can't spam sprint you know we can't just sprint everywhere we have to be very tactical about it. And if we do sprint, then we lose our action points that we could have been using on VATS or bullet time. Which I have both available, by the way. So our V button is our VATS, and our X button is our bullet time. Q button is our melee button. And um, that's pretty much the main things that we would use besides just shooting the monsters with our iron sights. Right now we're just clearing out this ridge to get some um, rock flower and xander root and just some basic supplies that are at the top of the ridge. I think Wild Wasteland gives you a 10mm pistol in a ammunition container at the top of the ridge along with a dead body that's not normally there. We're going to switch over to our caravan shotgun for these geckos. But um, hopefully you can already see that the gunplay is, is very tight, it's very satisfying. I mean, just look at that. Look at this reload animation. Oh my god. It's so glorious. Uh, that's not lootable. But yeah, I mean, if you haven't noticed, I'm doing the commentary in post. I'm not sure if I want to do it side by side with the gameplay or not. I think I'm just going to end up doing the commentary in post. That way I can kind of review and cut around if things get a little bit boring here and there. Mainly show you guys the actual, you know, core gameplay of the video of the playthrough, uh, the action scenes, the dialogue scenes, things like that that people actually 
actually care about so that you don't have to waste as much time um, skipping around. And if I do have time, then I will be providing um, timestamps. The amount of detail I'll provide in the timestamps depends on the video, but I will be providing timestamps just so you have an idea of like the segmented chapters in the video. But um, that caravan shotgun was doing some good work. We just blow the heads up out of those geckos. We are playing on hard difficulty with J Sawyer Ultimate Edition. So creatures are significantly tankier. Um, these these low level creatures or the smaller geckos, they obviously are going to die pretty quick. But um, if we fight the larger geckos, they're going to be quite strong and pretty difficult to deal with. We got a little scorpion here. We also have the bleed mod, by the way. I forgot to mention that. So enemies will take damage over time as well as the player character. So when you get shot at, it's not just the bullet that's going to hurt. It's the blood loss that could kill you too, potentially. So the stim packs are good at mitigating a lot of the blood loss, but that means they really are just not going to be healing you a whole lot in combat. You can see there the bloatfly died from bleed. And that's the graveyard cleared. So we're going to just check it for some supplies, see if there's anything we can use. I, I'm not sure why, but I guess I guess there's a mod that makes it so that it counts as stealing if you steal from graves, which makes sense, you know? That makes sense. I don't think there was a basic karma system implemented in Fallout New Vegas. Um, there was just the faction reputation system, so I do have a mod that's implementing karma, but I'm not sure how much that actually does affect our gameplay, if that matters you know, in the late term. So we are going to do a little bit of grave digging. I do feel a little bit bad about it because we're losing some karma, but eh, it's not too big of a deal. And then we're going to head over to the um, the Yangtze Memorial. I think, I think that's what it's called. But we're going to head over there because there's a little shed that I want to loot. All right, now we're heading over to the Yangtze Memorial or the abandoned shack next to the memorial. And I think, I don't, I don't know what mod is changing the actual interior of this location, but it does look quite different. We've got a Brahmin steak here. We have a electric hot plate, which I guess we can cook in. That's pretty cool. There's a lot of cooking recipes. Um, and I just don't have the survival to use any of these. So unfortunately, we're not going to be able to cook anything. I, w I do kind of like the idea of like a survival cook or like a combat cook. Um, but in most playthroughs, I pretty much never use survival. I, sh I probably should try to use survival a little bit more. I'm sure you can get some good buffs um, from the food. What the heck is that? We have a doggy treat in here. Um, and then we also have some magazines that we're going to just take. Just some pretty simple looting up in this place. Some BBs as well and a machete, which is a nice melee weapon to have. So right now I am going to be trying to keep all of my weapons on my regular hotkeys, my number pad hotkeys. But we also do have a weapon wheel that I'll probably show later on in the video that we can be using to both, you know, equip armor or weapons or ammo, whatever we want. We can use that for the weapon wheel. So we have additional hotkeys essentially. And here is the memorial. I don't think there's any actual loot in the memorial, but we are going to just do a little bit more grave digging again because this time there actually usually is good loot in, in the graves over here, or at least in one of the graves over here. So this one's empty. This one, however, has an incinerator and a laser RCW, which is pretty nuts. Um, the laser RCW, probably not going to use. It's kind of a piece of garbage early on. But it is fully automatic, which is nice. Uh, you can see our, our ADFOV is uh, hurting us a little bit there. You can tell that this was really built for uh, 60 FOV. 
And then we also have our incinerator. This is a really nice weapon to have early. This can chunk out some of the stronger or more tanky beefy monsters if we do run into that. Um, but we shouldn't need it, at least not at the moment, so I'm probably going to put that away. Then we're going to head over to the little pit over here. Um, there are some, some little doggy coyotes guarding the area, so we're going to take care of them. This, this one, <laughs> his pathing is a little bit screwed, and we just blast him through the fence. Poor guy. We have another one inside the pit. You'll notice that um, if, if you shoot them in the head because of the bleed mod, if you shoot targets in their weak spots, they actually take a lot more damage. And if you don't shoot them in the weak spots, or if you shoot them in the extremities, it's going to be dealing significantly less damage. So we are going to just loot the ammo and the star bottle cap in this area. And then we're going to head straight into the uh, the coyote den nearby. Alright, so we're at the coyote den. I'm going to just blast these coyotes with the caravan shotgun. Make some quick work out of these little puppers. I do feel bad about killing coyotes, honestly, even though they are kind of like pest animals. Um, but, you know, they're just out here surviving in the wilds. Unfortunately, they are obstructing our path to some good loot. Or some semi-decent loot, so we are going to go inside this cave. There's a little dog over there. Even subtle changes like the animation for the varmint rifle just kind of make this weapon so much more pleasant to use. Even though I've used it probably for countless hours, you know, like the amount of times that you'll play the start of a game like New Vegas or Skyrim is pretty insane. So I do have just a lot of experience on this weapon and it gets a little bit stale sometimes. And the animations really mix that up. They make things more fun and a refreshing new experience. Also the 10 millimeter pistol, might I say, with the uh, texture pack that we have on, the 10th anniversary texture pack. I think this is, oh, I actually, I don't know which texture pack this is from. There, There is a weapon texture pack that came out pretty recently um, that encompasses most of the guns and it's super, way better than weaponry texture project. Don't recall the name of it right now. But if I do, I'll probably leave a, a text here saying what the mod is, because I just don't recall what it was called. But that texture mod is amazing. Like, just look at this thing. It looks like a real gun, honestly. The uh, the 10 millimeter normally kind of looks like a toy gun. Let me see what you got. Go on over to that camp. So we got what we needed for the healing powder, hey, that's and not bad, I made see? my way back to Sunny. Sometimes it won't be a campfire you need. Important thing to get is a well. I and so now I'm we're done with the tutorial. Now. We can kind of just go wherever we want. I will head. help out Ringo and take on the powder gangers, though. That's probably going to be what we do for the first episode, and then we'll really start getting out there, exploring the wasteland. Um, we will progress the main story, of course, but then also if we run into any cool locations on the way, then we'll get our adventure going. I don't know why this Barton Thorn guy, he, he usually he just like goes up to you and he asks for help, but he starts running over here for some reason, so I'm following him. It looks a little suspicious. I accidentally activate my stim pack um, because I had that hotkey to four, and like a dummy, I just fat finger it. Um, so we waste the stim pack there, and then I notice that for some reason there's a free side gang, and they're out here attacking me. But luckily, I got the boys helping out, so. We, uh, you know, we take on these guys. He hits me once and he's over half my health, so that's pretty rough. They're definitely higher level dudes. I'm gonna blast them with a caravan shotgun, and you can see it's not really doing a whole lot. Um, so we go back, we fall back. Make sure to fight them out so that we don't take any melee damage. 
And uh, we're going to switch over to our 357 Magnum and put a cap in these guys. Okay, 357 Magnum, that's, that's doing some good damage. And it has a lovely reload animation. And then now this guy asked oh, for my, my help. <laughs> you, come here. So help we're going to we're gonna offer to give him help, but we already did that path. Go so path. I don't really think there's any point in even talking to him again. We're just going to let him be. I could just kill him on the spot here, but I don't really care too much. And uh, we are going to loot the leather armor. I'm going to quickly look away from the screen because uh, I can't figure out how to get the underwear option working for this male body texture that I have. Even though I have I have a mod that's supposed to give them underwear, it just doesn't. So <laughs> I can't show I can't show the male bodies on screen. Um, the female bodies do wear underwear. My player character, for some reason, doesn't have underwear for the body mod or the body replacer that I have, the Type 4. But it does work for the female NPCs, so I don't have to worry about, you know, looking away when that happens. But, you know, for, this is a YouTube video, so I will make sure that things are at least somewhat family friendly. I say somewhat because we are blasting people in the head and blowing up limbs and lots of gore and gunfire, so... I don't know how how child friendly that is, but yeah. <laughs> so it looks like they did um, scrap the uh, powder gangers over here. This guy died, and he had quite a lot of things on him. So I will take that frag grenade. I'll be more than happy to take that frag grenade. And there's still a powder ganger left. They're not vilified against us yet, so I guess he's not aggroed, but we're gonna just pop him in the back of the head. We're gonna put this guy out of his misery. Boom. And now we're vilified, so now they will shoot us on sight. But we're just gonna go and loot the explosives out of that crate. We want we wanna have explosives, those are good valuable tools to have early on especially when you're dealing with a group of enemies you don't have like fully automatic guns yet so you're gonna want to just be chucking dynamite at like groups of enemies if you have to or if the worst comes to worst we got some supplies in here mainly just some energy cells and a laser pistol got some rugged camel fatigues but i'm not gonna take that we already have um, our our jacket and we also have some leather armor But now we're going to head back to Good Springs. We're going to go finish up that quest. So we're going to head over to the saloon. And uh, talk to Trudy. I'm going to eat a little bit of food here. I got to top up on my health. We only have 90 HP. So if we take any gunfire, if we get shot in the head, we're going to die very quickly. As you could see there, I, I, I got hit once this entire time by a pipe and it chunked me for over half my health. So if you hit me again, I would have died. If you don't hand Ringo over soon, I'm going to get my friends and we're burning this town to the ground. Got it? We'll keep that in mind. Now, if you're not going to buy something, get out. <laughs> what the hell is your problem? Well, All right, and now we've loaded up to level two. I finally got to meet you. We're gonna just get Welcome through this dialogue real fast, land. and then we're gonna level up our character. Now, if you do play the base list for um, Fallout New Vegas Remastered 2022 on the, it's it's a collection from the, the Nexus mods. If you do just use it straight up by itself, you're gonna notice there's a lot of like Maybe. cheats and like really kind of OP quality of life changes made to the list. There was a mod that added perk every single level, which I think is just kind of too broken. So I've made a lot of revisions in terms of balance um, for the collections. If you use the collection, you're going to notice it's probably not going to be anywhere near the same in terms of gameplay as my game. It'll be again, similar, but just, I took out a lot of the cheat and OP things. So this should be as you know, about as balanced as I can get it. It's not going to be Requiem level where we're overhauling a lot of the gameplay mechanics to make things more immersive and realistic. But, you know, the world is still going to be scaled towards our character for the most part. And damage is going to be a very serious issue, especially Another in the mid game customer. where if you don't have um, good guns, if you don't have good perks, you're probably not going to be dealing a whole lot of damage. Uh, but enemies will be dealing a whole lot of damage to you, so... 
We're going to prioritize just the basic skills right now. Science, lockpick, um, and a little bit of barter. Get those up to 25 so that we can do basic lockpicking. We can do basic hacking. Um, those sorts of things that are going to be important. I also did not mention this, but I have a loot mod that despawns loot. So that's why um, you've probably seen already. We haven't been getting a whole lot of loot yet in terms of like ammunition and supplies. That's going to really lower the amount of loot that we get so that we're not overly stockpiled like how you normally are in a Fallout game. Feeling thirsty? And we actually do have enough barter here to get a sure little bit of extra no caps, which is no. quite nice. And some extra XP. We're going to pay Ringo a, a little visit. Howdy. We're going to run over to the gas station. And say hello to Ringo. That's close enough. Who if are you're you? gonna shoot, what? you better not miss. <laughs> Sorry about the gun. You just caught me off guard, that's all. We got off to a bad start. So we're just gonna get through the dialogue. We're gonna tell him that we're gonna help him out. He is running away from the powder gangers. And there are some supplies. There are some supplies in here, so we are gonna loot that. But again, because I had that that loot mod that's going to be removing loot, you can tell there's not really as much to go around, which makes sense because, you know, these places are either looted or lived in. There shouldn't be a whole lot um, to get by because we're just scavenging. You get some nice, some nice caps in here. We also have some caps in the register. And uh, now we're gonna head back. Um, yeah, we're just gonna head back and talk to Sunny, get the get the quest going. We're gonna talk to some people to help out with the powder gangers. If I press the end button, that turns on the visual objective, so I can actually see um, where I need to go for a quest. So that's a pretty nifty mod to have. I don't want to always enable that. It is kind of OP, um, but that'll really help you from ever getting lost if you need to do a quest. Say no more. Easy Pete's pretty pre And I think we should be able to get everyone's help except for Easy Pete. My uh explosive skill is extremely low because I, I dumped one point of uh perception. So there's pretty much no way we're gonna convince Easy Pete. We don't have a Patriots cookbook either. Um, we're just gonna start by uh, talking to Trudy. So you're planning on taking on And we have enough sneak to convince her to set up an ambush. That does sound like a good plan. Let me have a word with while everyone does own a gun. Now, normally, you know, if you're not playing with like a super difficult setup, you can just take on the powder gangers by yourself really easily. You just throw like one stick of dynamite, kill like half of them, and then shoot the rest. But we would not live an open gunfight, so. I'm gonna recruit the help of the town. That's gonna actually take care of most of the work because it's gonna put a, a lot of bodies on the field. So the powder gangers are gonna walk in the open and they're just gonna get lit up by the rest of the townsfolk and die. Um, pretty much just asking Trudy for help and the situation will be solved. But uh, since we have these optional objectives, I am gonna complete them. We're gonna drink a little bit of vodka to one, boost our charisma. And then we should have 25 charisma for this speech check. Or 25 barter, rather. You made your so we get some free leather armor. Quite nice. Leather armor and, extra ammo. Sure. And, uh, and, you know, we're also going to stock on some ammunition. You can see that Chet is selling some, some new stuff added in by mods. Um, we do have, I, I think, at least one clothing or armor replacer mod. Um... We have a holster mod that I'm not I don't really need to use because Arm to the Teeth actually adds holsters. We will buy the the goodies over here. Just just some skill magazines and then also ammunition. We want to buy that. Oh, and we did buy the HD cylinder for the 357 Magnum. That's always nice to have. Quite expensive, but very much worthwhile. It also just looks nice. <laughs> And I love the 357 Magnum. 
We're not going to be cheesing our lockpick for Lucky early on. We could do that, and honestly, Lucky is just an incredible weapon to have. It's a really powerful 357 Magnum, and it looks great, but yeah, I, I've done that very like way too many times, so we're not going to do that. We're not going to invest in lockpicking heavily here because we actually need to prioritize our other skills. I'm going to look at some stuff to sell. I have a bunch of like random junk in our miscellaneous section, so we're going to just sell that. The uh, poison gun is actually worth 20 caps, which is quite nice. Like, I'm so used to um, Skyrim's Requiem, where it kind of overhauls the market so that all of your junk is like legitimately worthless. And a lot of the money that you have to get is from like questing and doing other things and like looting. In Fallout New Vegas, you know, the economy is, is just broken enough you that you can sell stuff. Even with mods like, um, True Econ- I forget what the name of the economy mod is. <laughs> but I, I do have an, like, one economy mod to balance things out, make the sell and buying prices a little bit debuffed so that we can't just get a million caps in the early game. In vanilla Fallout New Vegas, I have unironically gotten 10,000 caps by the time I got to Novak. But we did buy some uh, three op buck, so we're gonna load that into our caravan shotgun. That's gonna deal some extra damage, and uh, we're ready to go for the powder gangers. Pretty much, we're gonna just talk to Doc Mitchell and get more healing supplies in case we need it. The good old Doc. How are you holding up? Seems like wherever I. Oh, so we pass the medicine check. Thankfully, we have 35 medicine, much, and he gives us some doctor bags, which are going to be really good in case we cripple our limbs, which is very likely to happen in the event we get shot in the limbs. So we're just going to stock up again a little bit on supplies, and then I'm just going to cut over to the fight with Ringo and the Patting Hangers. So we slept until the next day, and then now we're going to go visit Ringo, so what's going on? tell him that Sonny's with us, and we're ready to take on the All Patting right, Hangers. Time to look alive. The Powder Gangers are here to play. At least six. Joe Cobb included. And you know, I just realized I haven't been using the Fallout New Vegas radio, so we're going to turn that on for the next episode. But uh, yeah, you're just going to have to deal with no music, unfortunately, for this playthrough. I, or for this episode of the playthrough. I do apologize in advance. Now we're pretty much ready to go. Just going to check my ammo here. And the Pettigangers have already started shooting, so we're going to light them up. We load our gun. And look, <laughs> lo and behold, the townsfolk have already taken care of the rest of them. So I only had to kill like maybe one or two of them. And the rest of Trudy's gang took care of the rest. I'll stick around for a bit longer, but I'll... So that wasn't exactly a exciting shootout, I'll be honest, but we did have a whole lot of help. Um, I think there was a mod called like Living Skyrim or something, Living Desert, that actually adds in a lot of NPCs. So the town actually has more NPCs than usual, which means I get extra help. Um, so they made quick work of the Powder Gangers. We pretty much, they didn't even need me really. We just get a bunch of dynamite now and some guns. So that's going to pretty much set us up for the rest of the run. In the next episode, we're gonna head over to Prim and we'll see how that goes. Hopefully, I hope you guys enjoyed the gameplay so far. Um, look forward to more of the playthrough because I am actually really enjoying New Vegas. So I'm gonna be doing more of this. Um, I am still gonna record some Monster Hunter if I have time, but you know, lately I've just been kind of on the down low for Monster Hunter waiting for the next title update. So like, comment, and subscribe if you enjoyed the content here. Um, and again, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you guys in the next episode.